<laughs> I was waiting for you, Mr. Park. I was wondering, when is my good friend going to finally come? Time I take you down, do we? Oh, 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 oh. That's what you think. But I have got you surrounded, my friend. <laughs> you think you're better than me? You see, James, I am always three steps ahead of you. I thought that. You think you're steps ahead of me? I knew it. You're a lot smarter than I take granted. Well, I got one problem with that. Oh, yeah? And what is that one thing? That this is the shitty show. Welcome again to The Shitty Show. We hope you guys are enjoying the new format we got. I'm sure you've noticed a lot of new subject matter that you haven't really seen before. But anyways, we're not going to waste any time, are we, Kevin? Nope. We're going to kick it right off with the new segment you all love called The Commercial Review. You all love it. <laughs> and let's see, today's commercial is going to take us to, um, I think, the 90s, to when horror movies were on a slightly different level. Without having any context, you have no idea what this is. Some good music going. This guy taking a piss in the lake? I don't know. He seems to be pondering something, though. It's a big dude. Some tales are told, then soon forgotten. What's with the sad music? What's but a legend. What's with the Disney is area? forever. <laughs> Leatherface, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. Now, from the producers of A Nightmare on Elm Street, oh the real God. terror begins. Why is it so fat? November 3rd. Why is it so fat? weird? You know, what I think, like you know... Throws him the chainsaw hey, out of the water. We gotta, hey, we gotta give a thumbs up to New Line Cinema, though, because they kind of took the properties from Leatherface, Jason, and... Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, and they kind of, you know, they really did, you know, do stuff with it in the 90s. It was obviously to the next level, but it doesn't <laughs> compare to the stuff that was in the 70s and the 80s. But, um, yeah, that was that was pretty interesting. And I think it's really funny if you were to kind of chop this uh, video up and play it backwards. Check it out. All right. Well, we're going to do one more commercial review. Yeah. Uh, enough with the commercials, man. Oh, you don't like the commercial review now? Uh, it's all right. Uh, let's talk about it. Uh, let's do a movie discussion or something. 
the movie horror, discussion. Got the you horror mean, movies going. It's you mean you mean, you mean like the originals, like the first season movie discussion? Yeah, bro. We haven't done that in a little bit. All right. Well, I'm not. I'm not really feeling the whole Leatherface thing. I mean, I love Tex Chainsaw yeah, Massacre, no. but uh, right, you know what, person. Kevin? Give me a drum roll, please. Today's movie discussion is Friday the Thirteenth, the movie and the franchise. <laughs> What a great series. What a great series. Talk yeah. about childhood memories. I mean, and to think that it didn't even start with Jason. Jason is one of the most iconic villains, and the fact that he wasn't even in the first movie, except a little scare at the end, which was supposed to be a joke. But you never know when a joke at the end is going to turn into a franchise. Cough, cough, back to the future. But what you got to look at is what ended up happening with the mythology of the character. In the second movie, he had the sheep shack on his, you know, on his, on his face. And, and it was still crazy. You didn't know what he looked like. And still, people had no idea that they were going to see a hockey mask in the next couple of years. So yeah. still, this was new. You were like, oh my God, Jason's back to... He's running and stuff. Like he, oh my God, he's back to avenge his mother. And then all of a sudden, the third movie comes up, which is one of the best, even though it's completely surrounded in 3D and dance music. I mean, part three. Right now, let's listen to the third the music burn, opening. Right now. Let's, let's jam right now the third, uh, the third opening. Listen to this song right here. Does this sound like a Friday the 13th? Let's take a look at the first opening music. And let's take it to the third one. You, 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 you would feel like this is inside the Michael Jackson you know, dance-off of the 1980s. But anyways, it's still a great movie, especially when the guy gets his head smashed and his eyeballs pop right at the camera. You gotta love primitive 3D technology. But anyways, we're getting right to one of the best movies in the franchise, if not the best. The final chapter, starring our favorite 80s teen heartthrob, Corey Feldman. Oh, man. Now, part wow. four has got to be, like, seriously, I, I had so much fond memories watching it. I mean, why don't you give yeah. Teddy a little kiss to, uh, you're still a dead fuck, to typing it up on your computer. And it's funny, I mentioned three things from one character, but it's that good because it's just, God, it's, I don't know, I mean, the Corey Feldman making the masks. Isn't that, uh, isn't, uh, what's his name in it? Crispin Glover? Oh, absolutely! <laughs> Speaking of Back to the Future, whoa, coincidence, uh, you got George McFly, who, uh, time. yeah, he gets a corkscrew in the hand and a meat cleaver in the face, <laughs> and if you watch the uncut version right here, you'll see it's a lot more bloody than the theatrical version right here. Why do they gotta cut away like that? Clover. They literally ruined almost every Friday the 13th movie by cutting away, like Kevin Bacon in the first movie. Look where they cut away. They go right to the next scene. But in the unrated version... Look at that! Dude, look at all she believes, man! What the... Anyways, we're gonna take it now. New beginning. A lot of people hate it. It doesn't have Jason in it, except in Hallucinations, because Tommy Jarvis, yes. who was played by Corey Feldman, has grown up. But they did get Corey Feldman for the intro, yeah, because guess what? Paramount Pictures cared about the consistency of the films. So, anyways, we kind of skip New Beginning because it doesn't really involve Jason. Then comes Jason Lives, Friday the 13th no, it Part gets crazy. It gets crazy, but it turns into a lovable cartoon, just like the entire franchise. Yeah, now you start world. rooting for Jason. Seriously, I mean, with the paintball guys and <laughs> so kill them all. The annoying kids and the, you know he's driving, listening to Alice Cooper, Frankenstein. Yeah. He smashes the girl's head through the. Uh, yeah, that part's great. <laughs> it's it's just absolutely unbelievably funny and awesome. And it's like, does he think I'm a fart head? Mm -hmm. Yes. Are they adding comedy purposely? Pretty much because they're they're showing you that you can have fun while also seeing people get brutally murdered. Yeah. Once again, another example of how they have to cut the gore to make it suit the R rating. But anyways, we take it to the, I think, the craziest, part seven. <laughs> uh, a New Blood. I mean, that one is... Now it's just absurd. It is. Telekinetic powers versus Jason. The only thing I will give part seven, because it's just, I feel like it's just so... It just it, kills the shit out of everyone. Is that he literally kills the shit out of everyone in the unrated version. Once again, I have to show you guys this. This is the cut of a certain guy getting killed right outside of his car. Now, check this out in the unrated version. I apologize for the quality. We're doing Craig Thomas's death here. The beautiful one. That's yeah, where he gets his head squeezed down to the size of a walnut, spewing blood. That's from all everywhere. we saw there. Yeah. Oh, here now it gets much more right here. 
Yeah, there we, there go. we go. Isn't that nice? Look at that. It's beautiful. beautiful. Now, imagine a little snap, crackle, pop, and some squirty sounds. Yeah, Wouldn't that be attractive? Oh, my God. Dude, he crushes his head, and you literally see him smash it to pieces. Awesome. They had to cut that. They had to cut it. Who knows why? Thank God we got YouTube. <laughs> yes. All right, now we're going to take it to one of my personal favorites. It doesn't hold up to the originals, but it's still a great cartoon of a movie. Jason Takes Manhattan. They could have made a. They could have made him a cartoon. They pretty much did, man. It's like that is the cartoon element of you just seeing Jason kill person after person, stoner <laughs> after whore after dumbass after asshole That's after awesome. person who doesn't deserve That's to die. The best. He is seriously awesome, and he doesn't take any prisoners. He's killed people in wheelchairs. He has killed people he on boats. He's, I mean, in the later movies, he knows Everyone. how to shoot an arrow. So, Jason Takes Manhattan was good. Really cheesy because he goes to Manhattan and he, you know, scares a bunch of punkers and stuff, and it gets really weird. When, with... he, when he kicks the radio. Oh, totally. That's awesome, <laughs> and, and it gets weird. It just gets weird, and then the girl like does heroin and stuff. But. Anyways, we can go on and on. We love the series. If you haven't seen any of them, I don't know what rock you've been living on. I mean, I would start with the first and go right through every single one of them. Don't listen to people. A New Beginning has got some great deaths in it, great parts. They're all good fun. Don't think that it gets stupid after a certain one. It's all stupid. I mean, come on. just you got to go with it all. Friday the 13th, we got to give a double thumbs up. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to take it now to a commercial break, and as you've seen on our new season of Shitty Show, we have the continuing saga of the Babushka's Anonymous meaning. When we last checked, Drexel and Aaron were flipping out. Let's see what happens next, shall we? Easy. 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 Remember, remember what the nurse said. Remember when there's ratchet. I know you like to feel it. I know you like that feeling. Hey, it's really hey bad. sucker, why don't we eat this? Why would you do that? Now, hey, 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 we're not going to take it. We're not going to, we're not going to, this shit again. Hey, guys, sit down. Sit down. I'm a, this I'm ain't going to happen. Do you want to get, do you want to get Nurse Ratch in here? She'll give you the injection, man. She will knock you oh, out. Oh, she going to get seriously, down. Seriously, guys, seriously. She, like, seriously. Uh -oh. She already gave it to Chanel. Do you want to be like that? No. <laughs> <laughs> After all, it, this, this yeah, is okay, guys. This is—I think this is—I think um, we're missing the point of this whole meeting. I mean, he comes here on his day off to come talk to us about all of our incredible babushka addictions. I yeah, think that yeah. we should at least listen to him, all right? Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, what does Mister uh, What does Mister Intelligence got to say to us? I remember the first time I saw a babushka. It's the most beautiful thing. I saw it there, hanging in my mother's closet. I just couldn't help but touch it. It was so powerful, it burned my eyes. I couldn't see for the rest of my life. I just think of it every day. And every wow. night I go to bed and I grab my blanket. Wow. I wrap it around my head. Just wishing it was a bush. But it's not. It's not. I have the same exact feelings, bro. <laughs> It's okay. Oh. It's okay. Hey. It's okay, bros. Hey, guys. Hey, guys, just, just listen, guys. I, I have a feeling of <laughs> I'm being resurrected again. Bush is coming up again. <laughs> my older brother Joe in Illinois. He sure is a stand-up individual like myself. Oh hey, my name is Charlie Puba and I, like my brother, care about the environment. I'm not going to sit and let our town go down the drain due to corruption and pollution. If you vote for me, I promise you better schools, better streets, and better health and a safe environment for you and your family. Cuba cares. Cuba cares. Vote for Cuba Tuesday. I know there's a lot to choose from this election, but if you're looking for a candidate who won't give up and who will be there for you when you're in need, remember, Cuba cares. This message has been brought to you by the Charlie Puba Environmental Organization. Vote Charlie Puba for mayor. He will clean up this town personally. 
again, pubic hairs. You ever come home from a hard day's work? There's three things on your mind. A beer, the couch, and Uncle Frederick's select choice. Uncle Frederick's select choice. The best choice. Enjoy a nice vanilla infused tobacco flavored product you sure will not forget about. So this is interesting. I'm online looking at a picture of a Trump rally. A little closer. Found him. Hey y'all, let's see what's cooking in Kimber's Kitchen. Hi and welcome to Kimber's Kitchen. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make Trump tacos. Trump tacos are a fantastic dish to serve whether you're watching the political debates, whether you're just having a regular dinner with the family, or if your relatives from Alabama are in town. All right, so let's get started. Some of the ingredients that you're gonna need is chicken, white beans, white cheese, and sour cream. Notice all of our ingredients are white. That's only because, well, it's because uh, we had to kick out all the Mexican ones. But anyways, so let's get started. So the first ingredient is going to be chicken. And notice here, I place a border between the, our two tacos here. You know, the bigger the border, the better. So you're gonna put this at the base of the taco. You could say that uh, we prefer the, the white meat over the dark meat on this recipe. All right, and then next, we're gonna also add some beans, some white beans. We're gonna place them next to the chicken. Speaking of chicken, how about those damn Democrats? Then we're gonna grab our cheese, grate the cheese really good. <laughs> we're gonna make these tacos great again. <laughs> now we're gonna wanna put our sour cream on top of everything here. Mmm, sometimes it's good just to take a nice, nice big bite of... <sighs> Mm. Anyways, back to the recipe. And so as you guys can see, our tacos are a little bit bland. You can pair it with a side of some white chips. You know, some of those green ones and the brown ones, the yellow ones, just or the red ones don't really, you know, complement the dish very well. They don't always send their best chips, if you know what I'm saying. So we're gonna add some color, but of course, the only color that Donald Trump likes, which is green. So you're just gonna want to put the money all over the tacos. It serves great as lettuce and adds a little bit of a crunch and a little bit of a stripper's ass taste, but you know. So now that your tacos are all finished, they're ready to serve. Your family is going to have wide eyes and their wallets ready. Okay, welcome back. Glad you guys are having fun. Once again, I'm Adam. Kevin. We're having a great time. And uh, do we have time for any more segments? Or... Uh... We actually... 
I don't think so, man. Oh, dude, it, actually, yeah, man. What's going on with that? Sorry, we had we, we weren't yeah we weren't expecting because the movie discussion we kind of that kind of grabbed us by surprise. So uh, we improvise. Yeah, we're we're actually gonna close out. You know what? We're just gonna have a, a musical guest come up and play us off. So Kent Conkey. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Adam. I'm here to play Skeletons in a Moot, a nice Halloween song. Play us off, buddy. Think of that. That was the worst show ever. <laughs>